Oh, I should have grabbed water before I sat down. That's a normal occurrence. Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my favorites by month. So for the past year, um, I have decided to keep track of my favorites by month, meaning my favorite book of all the books I read in a specific month. Um, and I do believe that I saw Becca for Beck and the Books do something like this, but I don't remember when it was, and I'd honestly forgotten about it until this moment. So um, in my bullet journal, I kind of keep a tr track of every single month. So I thought it would be kind of fun to just go through those. Some of these are all-time favorites. Some of these will probably make an appearance in my favorites of the year, but some of them may not. So I wanted to give them their due. So let's just jump right into it. The first one is actually the only one I don't own, and that is Educated. Now this is my January book. It was my favorite for the month of January, and it has been a little bit of time since then, so I don't remember my exact thoughts on this, but I do remember really, really, really enjoying this one. This is a just a fascinating nonfiction book about a woman, the author obviously, uh, who basically grew up in a household that was very sheltered, kind of almost, you know, doomsday in a sense, where like they were like preparing for the end of the world, preparing to not rely on the government or anybody else. So they lived on a farm and she just didn't really have a lot of education and it's her following her childhood as she does, you know, eventually get end up going to college and stuff like that. Um, and it's just really fascinating. It's really tough. So like, I would suggest looking up trigger warnings for this book because there's a lot of stuff in it, uh, like, like a lot of stuff in it. Um, but it was just really fascinating to see this woman's story. So yeah, that one, I don't even remember what the other books that I read in January, but this one really like stuck out to me. So it was definitely my favorite for that month. For the month of February, my favorite book was To Have and To Hoax by Martha Waters. This is the first, and I believe it's called the Regency Vows series, and this is actually an art copy that I, I won in an Instagram kind of giveaway. I was very excited about it. So this takes place in kind of the Regency era, and it is a second chance romance between, what was her name, Violet, yes, Violet and James. Now they've been married for five years, they fell madly in love and got married, and then a year into the marriage they had a huge fight and they haven't spoken to each other in four years or like it's a very cold shoulder kind of things and this whole book <laughs> is, is basically them trying to outprank each other and it's it's so much fun the banter is really great there's fantastic humorous dialogue and situations and I just I love every second of it and then you've also got this fantastic romance element to it as well. So I really love this writing. It's like I said pretty pretty humorous so if you like things like Tessa Dare, if you like the oh shoot um Evie Dunmore series, she's got a very similar writing style, just that very kind of like humorous situation I think is really good. But I still think very highly of this book and it was definitely my favorite in February. So for March, my favorite book in March was the first in the Crescent City series by Sarah J Mass, which is House of Earth and Blood. I read this for a kind of like secret TBR vlog. I was trying to read people's 2020 favorites and this one I believe I picked for Becca for Becca the Books. I'll leave that video above if you'd like to check it out. Um, but at this point when I read this I'd never read anything by Sarah J Mass. But I was very interested in it and everything I'd heard about her writing and her stories sounded really interesting to me, but I'd never given any of them a chance. I was a little scared, to be honest. So this was my first step into kind of her writing and her world, and I loved every second of it. So I'm sure <laughs> y'all are tired of me raving about this book, but I cannot wait for like the second one that now actually has a release date. This takes place in an urban fantasy setting. We follow Bryce and some events in the beginning of the book. I'm sure many people know what they are. It is set on the inside jacket, but um, I agree with most booktubers and I think it's a pretty big spoiler. But things happen and she is dealing with quite a lot of trauma. And some, 
you know, mysterious stuff is going on and she kind of gets suckered in to solving some of the mysteries with this fallen angel named Hunt. Um, and it's the two of them trying to figure all of this stuff out, but it's just fantasy goodness, you know? I just, I loved the world because in this city you've got all of these different magical creatures. Like I believe Bryce herself is half fae and it's, I just, I think it's fascinating. So I cannot wait for the second one. Very, very worried about some things in the second one based on what Sarah J. Meth likes to do in second books, but I loved it. I will never stop raving about it. So this like took, like this became my favorite Oh my goodness, like way well above a ton of other stuff that month. It was just, it still is one of my favorites of like all time. For April, I picked Get a Life of Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert as one of my favorites. Now this, I believe when I read this, the third one had just come out. So there was a lot of hype kind of surrounding the series and I hadn't given any of them a chance, but I really, really wanted to. And actually I believe this one was a gift. Yeah, it was a gift from my lovely friend Serena from A Wandering Mind. I'll leave her channel linked down below. Um, and so she gifted this one to me and I was like, I need to just, you know, I, I need to get around to it. I've heard so many great things. I'm very excited about it. So I was worried because I had so much hype in my head, but it was worth it in my opinion. So we follow Chloe Brown who at the beginning of the book almost gets hit by a car <laughs> and so she basically has this moment of like my life flashed before my eyes except for her life was super boring. So she decides to fix that and she goes out she makes this list of things that she wants to do to kind of get a life and first one is moving out. So she does move out she moves into this apartment and kind of not the handyman but like He's, yeah, no, he is the handyman of this apartment. And he and her get off on the wrong foot, but he somehow gets sucked into helping her complete this list. And so it's their story and it's so freaking cute. And I've also heard that there is good rep in this book because our main character, Chloe Brown, is chronically ill. Now I can't speak to that, but I've heard people, kind of other booktubers who are chronically ill and have said that this is pretty good rep for them. So I just, I don't know, I love this series because all of them, are something different. It's it's a main character you don't usually see in romance and so I freaking loved it. So yeah, um, if you haven't read this, please do. It's got snarky, banter, humorous moments as well. It's very well written in that way. So if you like, like the fun stuff, I think you'll like this. Now in May, my favorite book shocked even me and that was Lovely War by Julie Berry. Now by now I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about this quite a few times but at the time I was super worried to get into it. It was, it sounded interesting, it sounded like something I would really enjoy because it is about kind of these two love stories but told from the perspective of Greek gods. However it is set during World War One and Two, and I'm not a huge fan of books set in wars so I was really nervous about it. I did read this for I believe it was the Do the Thingathon which is hosted by Ashley from Reflective Fiction so I'll leave that video above but I'd had this on so many TBRs and I finally finally got around to it and I loved it. Now I've raved about this recently I'm pretty sure this was in my surprises yeah it was in the last video you guys saw so I won't rave too hard on this but like I said it does follow these two couples and the story is told from the Greek gods perspective and it's just very well done because like you don't need to know about Greek mythology if anything about this book sounds interesting it's just a different way of formatting the book um and then at the same time if you're someone like me who's not in love with like the war setting it's not a lot of like you're with them at the war in the trenches kind of situation. It just happens to be at that time period. Um, and I just thought it was really interesting because all of these characters are in different parts of the war. One of them a soldier, one of them is um, part of the like military band slash is a soldier but doesn't really fight. And so and then you've got their two love interests who are nurses and parts part of this story. So I thought it was really amazing. I highly highly recommend and I just loved everything about this book because everything had a purpose. It wasn't like I'm just gonna tell it from the Greek gods. Just just, just to tell it from the Greek gods. No like there was a reason for it and they had their own story and I just oh my gosh please read this. June actually had two favorites because I couldn't choose. Um, 
because these are pretty equal in my opinion. So we have the first volume of Dreaming Sun. This is when I started this beautiful manga series that I am, I think, four volumes in at this point, maybe five. I can't remember exactly where it's at. I think about four. And I think it was great. It follows our main character, Shirahama. I know I've mentioned this so many times, but it follows our main character, Shirahama, who isn't feeling loved at home. Her dad has remarried and they have had a another child and she feels kind of like left out. So she decides that she's going to run away. But she meets this man in a park and he basically is like, look, I've got a place for you to live, but you've got to do some things. You got to fall in love. You got to have a dream, you know, that kind of stuff. And so she says, sounds good. And she moves in and it's her and she lives in this house with two other guys that she happens to go to school with and this kind of landlord character. And then it's just her kind of discovering all these friends and it's almost like a found family trope, but it's also ridiculously cheesy and a lot of the moments are silly. Like, like she, she, her love interest changes very quickly based on her mood. Uh, so if you're not someone who likes that, just fair warning. But if you just want fun and you don't need anything like to think too hard on, I think that this is going to be a good series. But I fell head over heels in love with this series. So I had to put that one in. But at this time I also finished the Akatar series. So I have Akamath, A Court of Mist and Fury as well because I went down an Akatar rabbit hole in the summer and I just I mean can you see how many tabs I have I have not tabbed a book that much in quite a while so I fell in love with this series I had read you know I'd read Crescent City by this point and I wanted to give the Akatar series a try and so I did and it was great I will leave the vlogs down below because I did vlog my entire experience reading the series um they're all spoilery so just an FYI but I yeah Need I say more? I feel like everyone know, knows what the Akatar series is about. But the first one follows Feyre, and she kills this wolf in the woods, but the wolf was actually a fey in disguise, and so then she's brought over to the fey world kind of as, like, in place of this person. Like, you took this guy's life, so I'm going to take yours by bringing you over to the fey world. Um, and so she's in the fey world and they are all these different courts and then of course there's this big bad person who's doing bad things. It was really interesting. I really enjoyed it and I think Akamath is my favorite in the series so that's why it's here. But these two were so good. I had a good month in June. And then in July I had quite another surprise which was in my last video as well and I read The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab and this one was my favorite by far in July. So I did read this one for another vlog where I read hyped books and I was wondering if they were going to kind of like, you know, hyped books that d did they work for me or not kind of thing. And I'd given B.E. Schwab a chance before. I'd read the first in her Darker Shade of Magic series and didn't particularly love it. So I was really nervous but I had heard good things about this and I decided to give it a chance and it was fantastic. So I'm sure this is super hyped. I'm sure so many of you know what this book is about. But it follows the character of Addie LaRue, who kind of makes this deal with a devil-like character to... Basically, she thinks it's going to be one thing and it turns out being another. And what ends up happening is that she can live forever and she's free and she's on her own and she can be, you know, do her thing, but she's forgotten by everybody. So, like, you can meet her and she'll walk out of the room or you'll walk out of the room and you'll immediately forget who she is. And so it's got this dual timeline because it starts, you got one timeline that follows her in the past when this kind of starts and shows her kind of learning to deal and kind of figure out how to live with this curse, let's say. And then you've also got like a present timeline where she meets this book shopkeeper who remembers her. And she's like, wait, 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 excuse me? And so it's it's their friendship. And it's just incredibly beautiful. And I got sucked in so quickly. So, oh, yeah. Yep. I've read about this a ton, but I really, I really love that book. So good. The next one, what month are we on? August? August. So in August, I read The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Klune, and I fell in love. Um, I feel like I read this for like a very specific reason. Did I make that up? I don't remember. I ended up picking this one up because it was super hyped. Everyone really, really loved it, and I had like so many people telling me I needed to read this book, so I did. I finally read this book, and in my opinion, it's also very much worth the hype. So this follows our main character, Linus, and he is 
I don't know what his job title is, but he works at the department in charge of magical youth. And he basically, his job is to go to these houses and these orphanages that house these magical children and make sure that they're kind of up to, up to snuff, make sure they're doing the right thing, they're up to code, everything is good to go. And so he's sent on this very special mission um, to this very secluded house and this very secluded place. And this house is just kind of like very strange. All the children are very different and he is, his his beliefs in the system are tested. Um, and so it's him and his time at this house. And it's absolutely beautiful. I loved it. I was not in love with the writing at first, but you get so sucked in the story that you just kind of forget about the writing, to be honest. And I freaking love this book. It's so good. So I am looking forward to when I can read his next or his most recent book, which is Under the Whispering Door. But he just has a very fantastical way of pl like plot wise. He just, I don't know, his stories are really interesting. And they're so simplistically told, you know, I just it's, it's a contrast that I didn't think would work for me. And it somehow did. In September, I started off my kind of like fall readings, um, and I read The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page, and I loved this one. So this is the first in a duology. The second one is coming out at the beginning of next year, and it takes place on a college campus, but it follows this sorority that are called The Ravens. And everyone just thinks that they're very, very picky on who was kind of included in the sorority, and they are, except that if you pledge for them, that means that you are a witch and the sorority is actually a coven. And so it follows the perspective of two girls on this campus. You've got one girl who is a freshman and she's just starting school for the first time, just leaving home for the first time. And she is pledging for this sorority, but she didn't even know that she had magic. And then you've got this other girl who I believe is a junior at this point, And she really wants to be the president next year and so she becomes pledge master this year and they get paired up as little and big and they really don't like each other at first and so you've got that whole situation you've got you know the situation of these girls pledging but you've also got some murder mystery elements going on in the background that's revolving around the sorority as well so it's really well done. I think this is a good book for people who really love contemporary and are trying to get into fantasy because it's very contemporarily set, but it's got these fantastical elements to it. And I just think it's perfect for the witchy season, for that fall season. And it was just really good. It sucked me in immediately and I could not stop reading. I don't know what it was. I don't remember anything like particularly exciting about the writing style. I just could not put it down. So yeah, it was great. In October, my favorite book of that month was The Wallflower Wager by Tessa Dare. Now this, I think, was my like third or fourth Tessa Dare book. I was started, I had like just started my buddy reads of all the Tessa Dare books with my friends Tay and Brooke. And so this one, I, we, we were a few in, and this one just sticks out in my memory. And I just loved this one so much. It was so fun. Her writing style is so funny. Like you're reading this book and you're rooting for these characters and yet you're laughing out loud at the same time. Like you just have such a great experience. So this one in particular is the third in the Girl Meets Duke series, which is a series that follows four friends and are just kind of like a group of friends in each book because it's perspective romance. And so this one in particular, it follows Penelope, who is basically just someone who takes in stray anything. So she's got all these ridiculous animals like let's see she's got kittens, a two-legged dog, a foul-mouthed parrot, a goat, an otter, a hedgehog, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't say on the back but I'm pretty sure there are some cows in there as well. So she just kind of takes in all these animals. Um, and it's her and this guy who lives next door who is a duke and he sorry, he's not a duke, his name is Gabriel Duke. And he is basically like really annoyed with all these animals because he bought this house because he's hoping to sell it for a lot of money because it's next to this like very well-known lady. And um, they strike up a bargain because her family wants her to not live there anymore, especially not live there alone or, or with a chaperone who's not 
not so great. And so it's just them and they're so freaking cute. And Penelope is so innocent, but at the same time, like there's, there's this other level to her, you know, like she's innocent, but she knows she's innocent and she knows that something's going on, but she doesn't know what it is. And so like, she never gets herself in certain situations because she knows the outcome is not going to be great. So like, she's naive but to a point that's believable you know and i just i don't know that's so much fun i freaking loved these characters i love this series i love tessa dare it's great and november my favorite book of that month was pride and premeditation by tirza price i've raved about this quite a lot recently because you know november was not that long ago, but I, I loved this book. So this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a murder mystery that takes the characters from Pride and Prejudice. That's about it. Um, the plot is completely different. The characters were all the same. Some of the places are the same. So like you have that, you know, if you're a Jane Austen fan, you have that like hint and that nostalgia, I guess, attached to some of these situations. But the plot is totally different. So we follow Lizzie, whose father is at this time's equivalent of like a lawyer. And she wants to prove herself that she wants to be a lawyer, but she's a woman. And so like at this time, that was not really great. And so she's like, I'm gonna prove myself. I'm gonna get this really great client. Well, at the time, this great client is a man named Bingley who has been accused or yeah, accused of killing his brother-in-law and his lawyer is Darcy. So it's the two of them and she kind of gets included forcefully. She includes herself in this whole situation. <laughs> so it's just them and it's got some of the awesome murder mystery elements to it. And if you like Lizzie, like strong-willed, headstrong Lizzie, then you'll love this one because I think this author does a really good job of keeping that in um, and just making it really believable. But I freaking love this book. This author is coming out with other ones based on other Jane Austen books and I'm beyond excited. But I, this was just a good fun ride. Like it really had nothing to do with Pride and Prejudice beyond the like characters are the same, but I just, I loved it. It was, just, it was so much fun. And for December, which is kind of a hard one to do, considering that we are about halfway through the month now, but as of recording this, as of filming this, um, this may change by my reads for the second half of the month. But as of right now, my favorite for the month has been When He Was Wicked, which is the, I believe, sixth one in the Bridgerton series. So this one follows the third daughter but the sixth sibling I think if I did my mouth right <laughs> and that's Francesca Bridgerton and so this follows her and her cousin called Michael now she gets married to Michael's cousin um and they have a lovely marriage and Michael has been in love with her since the minute he saw her um and he is a known rogue and it's and this whole thing and then her husband unfortunately passes away and it's the two of them kind of reconnecting after that and some stuff goes down um and I don't I just I love the Bridgerton family I I just I don't know what it is I'm obsessed with them I have read quite a few. I only have two left in the series, <laughs> which are the two youngest, which is Hyacinth and George. And now at this point, I think it's been like 15 years or something since the beginning of the series. Like it's been, it's been quite a long time. So I think she's like 26, 25, 26 at this point. Whereas in the first book, I think she was like barely 15 or something I don't even know like it's it's quite a wide range but I have loved all of them so far and this one was just a lot of fun I was very curious it has like a Scotland twist to it and so I was like oh I need to get my hands on that because anything with Scotland in it I'm like give me give me that so I really enjoyed it it's just a fun historical romance. Um, again, my favorite for December could change, but as of right now, it's this one, and I really loved it. But that is it. Those are a look at all of my favorite books by month. I thought this was just kind of a fun little experiment. I think I'm going to do it again next year, just kind of keep track of my favorites of each month, just because, like I said, some of these will for sure be in my favorites of the year, but some of them won't. There are some other good ones, but each month is so different. And I just think this is a fun way to like chart it all. 
but let me know if you have read any of the books that I have mentioned today or if you did something kind of similar to this where you kind of charted you know your favorites by month let me know what some of the years were or if you have some predictions on what your favorites of the year would be I would love to know that as well. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links. So don't forget to check all of that out, and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.